In 2009, the UK-based charity One Young World it was founded to gather young leaders from around the world and to empower them to create positive change. Now, last year's conference, uh, One Young World Summit, took place in South America and was a dazzling display of unity and hope for the future. Three hundred and sixty-five days have passed since the last One Young World. This year, in 2017, we find ourselves in Bogota, Colombia, where the best young minds and young leaders from around the world will come together to share their ideas with some of the most influential leaders of our time. The annual One Young World Summit gives delegates the opportunity to formulate and share innovative solutions for the world's pressing issues. The inspiration for One Young World was the absence of really good leadership, particularly in the government space, and also the values of the Olympic movement, which includes every human being, everybody in one family. In 2010, we had just over 800 delegates, and today here in Bogota, we've got over 1,350. At a simplistic level, the key vision for One Young World is to find the next Mandela. There's a real vacuum in leadership in the world today, and we want to give the brilliant young leaders a platform that can help accelerate their growth and development. This year's host city, Bogota, is the capital of Colombia and is a diverse multicultural city with a rich history, a perfect backdrop to inspire young people. For Bogota, for Colombia, and for us Colombians, it's great to have One Young World here. Uh, not only because we have people from all over the world that are coming here to see how Colombia is different, is great, and is full of opportunities, but also because you can show people from all the parts in the world that we are a source of hope. That seeing youth in power, reconciliation, of building a new country and taking things forward is the best source of hope of our nation and for other nations that are now pointing Colombia and seeing if peace in Colombia after 50 years is possible, peace in the world is possible. One Young World is an amazing platform for young leaders to drive change because it's this opportunity for our voices to be heard. There's people, for example, in Colombia with amazing, tremendous idea that nobody has ever heard and that they just remain in ideas. One Young World is the perfect scenario to collaborate with other young leaders from around the world and especially to take those ideas and turn it into realities and also to scale up. I'm the perfect example with the business nation. We are having tremendous results in Latin America and we feel that this productive and education can be taken to all over the world. We have people coming to us from India, from Bangladesh and telling us this will be an amazing solution for the problems that we're having in our different countries. So I think this is the perfect platform to make things happen happen and not stop ideas. It is so amazing. I'm, I'm awed with the number of young people we have here. I've been to a lot of youth summit, but this is the biggest I've been with such a huge number of young people, 1,000. You know, I, I told someone, I said, it's a rejuvenating time for me. I believe in synergy, you know. An African proverb says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you really want to go far, you have to go together. And coming here to meet other people doing the same thing, it reminds you that you're actually not crazy after all. I, I remember the quote of Kofi Annan when he said, young people should be at the forefront of global change and innovation. If we are empowered, it will be better for all of us. But if we are, however, left at society's margin, the whole world will be impoverished. The world will suffer for that. So I'm so happy for this platform that I could meet other people. I could hear inspiring stories. I could also tell my story. And for me, it's just not about a trip to Colombia. It is going further. The fight for justice continues. The demand for justice continues. And I'm inspired by other young people. And I hope I've also been able to inspire other young people. So together, we can actually achieve it. Bogota bid first, it was an amazing bid, and that's the reason that they were chosen as a host city. Um, but over and above that, there's such an amazing lesson that the world can learn from them. We love to bring One Young World to places that can teach a lesson to the world. And obviously the peace process that they've been through and the, the role that President Santos has played in that. And we think there's amazing lessons for the world all around peace and reconciliation. I think that from the theme of peace and reconciliation will flow a lot of peace building work around the world. Already we've seen projects today that are probably bigger in scale and more impactful than, than anything we've seen in, in, in the last 12 months. With such positivity and innovative ideas, these young leaders are the vanguard of an exciting future for the world. It's my feel good 
Well, listen, every year the One Young World Summit takes place and it's a great way for forward-thinking institutions, NGOs, young individuals to get together and really solve or come together to come up with solutions with some of our most pressing issues. And what's really incredible is that Africa also has quite a few, you know, spaces on that stage, if I can put it that mm. way. But here are some highlights. At the annual One Young World Summit, young leaders gather from 196 countries across the globe, and Africa's delegates were both diverse and inspiring. Kaya, it's so awesome to be able to meet up with you in Bogota, Colombia at the One Young World Summit. You're doing some incredible things back home in South Africa. Tell me a bit about that. Uh, I have an organization called The Young Catalyst. Um, you can actually visit the site. It's www.theyoungcatalyst.co.za. What we do is, we ignite tomorrow's leaders and everything that we do is encapsulated in that. So we're trying to solve three problems within the country. We know that the education system in the country needs some work, specifically in the maths and science field. So next year I'm looking to start a maths guru initiative where I help high school students um, with mathematics through extra lessons and then we want to expand it as well and hopefully include technology in that equation. I recently relaunched the brand, so it's quite fresh. And then in terms of entrepreneurship, we'll be holding a seminar in March. And in that seminar, basically, it will all be about helping these young startup businesses develop a really good business model, which will help them develop revenue and hopefully employ more people. I felt like it's very important that I create a platform which actually encourages and celebrates young people. So I would celebrate young people who have startups which they're doing, so young entrepreneurs. People aren't really celebrated because most people are celebrated once they make it big because of the passion that I saw from them. For me, it's about going for what you want. That inspires me. What inspired me to be part of One Young World 2017 is I always wanted to be the somebody who wants to make a difference. I run an NGO for metropolitans in underprivileged schools, so basically helping them with ways to get into institutions of higher learning. We organize career days, so we invite our friends and colleagues with, from different backgrounds to come and uh, just explain what they do in, a, in their daily life and also how to get to, the, to their professionals. Yeah, so we, we're trying to make a change. I run a non-profit organization that works to end female genital mutilation, child marriage and forced marriage. We work mostly with young people and survivors of the practice. We believe that the biggest tool that we have is our own voice and our stories. And by working with young people, we ensure that FGM is ended in our generation. So it's that story of one girl, one generation. To drive change in my community, I'm, I'm teaching children in schools how and why they have to protect their environment for the simple reason that my country, Chad, is one of the hardest countries in the whole world. And it's one of the countries where you, the, the, the climate change is real. So I know that educating children is one of the main solutions that could help you know, like people to get aware you know, like about global warming and also to take the better decisions in the future. Whether it's environmental issues or social upliftment, One Young World delegates are 18 to 30 year olds who show leadership and commitment to positive change. I started Presto Academy. We empower the top performing students in South Africa to create educational material for their peers. Our content is accessed through our online academy and through physical books. We've assembled the A-team literally. So each of our authors have received a high 90% or 100% in that subject or matric. The thing that inspired me to start Presto Academy is that we noticed a lot of our friends were struggling making the jump from high school to university. So we wrote the books ourselves and then we ended up getting it published and we sold 250 copies of our economics guides at the University of Cape Town and our accounting book became a recommended study guide at the University of Stellenbosch. Then from there we used that money to expand into the high school market. So moving forward, we want to expand our high school content and our life coaching for students to reach a million students in South Africa in the next two years. We then li like to license that content to the rest of Africa and then partner with my fellow One Young World delegates to expand globally. 
Through this summit, Africa's young change makers are able to share their innovative ideas and join a network of young leaders who are having a positive impact on our incredible continent and inspiring change around the world. It's my feel good one of those amazing summits is the One Young World Summit. And when it comes to Generation Y and Generation Z or Z, one thing that you know these generations growing up had in common is the rapid progression in technology mm. and most of them if not all of them has always had internet connectivity so they see the power of social media and when a summit like this comes together they're going to use that for positive change The annual One Young World Summit is a gathering of talent from various organizations and world leaders to debate, formulate and share innovative solutions for the world's pressing issues. This year there was a lot of talk of the role of social media in creating positive change. Jure, it really is an honor and privilege to be able to chat to you. You are known for your social activism on social media platforms. What inspired you to get involved and start this? So the police in St. Louis killed a young man named Mike Brown, and that was the beginning of the movement for so many of us. And I was one of the people that went to Ferguson, St. Louis, uh, because I knew that that was wrong. And I used Twitter as a way to help organize and as a way to spread messages and a way to galvanize people. I had 800 followers uh, back then. I'm close to a million now. And I think about Twitter as a friend that's always awake. So it was my way of processing the world, not just for myself, but also for other people. So what are you currently working on at the moment? One of the things that we know is that systems and structures change people's behaviors, but neighbors change people's minds. So trying to figure out what are all the systemic uh, and structural things that need to change so that people have more access, that prisons aren't uh, as awful as they are, uh, so that people aren't in prison. Like, how do, what are the structural things that we need to change? And then what are the messages that we need to make sure that people have so that they, their minds change, their mindsets change? So working on some big projects around ending mass incarceration and giving people the concrete things that they can do and that should change in their cities or states or at the federal level. And also being creative about things like the racial wealth gap or public health or about the environment uh, in ways that we've just not seen before. Creating platforms so that you can be an activist or you can be an engaged citizen and you don't need to be a part of an organization you don't need to talk to me or anybody else like you have the information and to build that how do you think the youth of the world today can use social media platforms correctly to drive the change that they would like to see i think social media allows two things one is for you to be connected to people who you don't physically need to be in proximity to and the second is that it just accelerates the pace of information. So in one fell swoop, I can talk to a million people and spread a message in a way that was just impossible 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So I'm hopeful that the combination of those things will help spread messages and help get people awoke about these issues in ways that they weren't before. I also know that social media doesn't just replace offline organizing, that there will always need to be people who physically go to the meetings and physically uh, sort of protest in the street and run for office. but. The accelerated pace of which uh, messages can travel now is just so powerful. A portion of the summit was devoted to the use of social media for change and how youth can achieve their goals with digital platforms. You're saying you've had success using different social media platforms. How do you think the youth of today can use social media to drive the change in their communities? One thing I found was though, using social media platforms, I kind of lost a lot of my audience. When I was doing like disposable content, like things I put in marshmallows in my mouth and stuff like that, it would do really well. However, when I'm doing stuff that has more meaning, I lost a lot. So then it made me sit back and analyze how can I approach the situation in a fresh perspective? And that's where poetry fitted into it. If you want to drive a change, you have to do it in the way that's most realist to you, because that's when the audience will engage with you. The audience online is the same as television. They will see through your facade and your fakeness and ulterior motives and hidden agendas. You just have to come straight, raw, and get to the point and deliver it the way you want it. I think social media is an incredible way to reach people all over the world and also to listen to what people have to say. So for us, it's a great way that in which we get feedback from people and we know what people want, what people don't want, and also express conflicting ideas. For me, the, the social media, I see it as an instrument of activism. I take it seriously. Some other young people post nice things, they do all sort of things, but for me, it is an instrument. I'm a human rights lawyer, I'm not financially buoyant, it is hard for me to have access to the traditional media. So what do I do? I said it some days ago, a few megabytes can bring the change you want to see in the world. So 
My right in Article 19, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the right to freedom of expression, what I use Facebook to do is a tool to realize that right for me. So I would say that for every young person out there, just know that you can be the change you want to see in the world. Don't be scared to take out your initiative. We all could fail when we do things, but we just should never stop trying. Hope and dears, keep doing what you're doing, and together we can make the world a peaceful place where everybody's rights are respected, protected, and fulfilled. So, viva youth, viva. Although the aim of the summit is to help delegates form a global network of young leaders, it also inspires young people to use their social media networks to offer help and spread messages of hope.